Hello, everybody. We're live on the internet. Holy shit, what a what frame rate is this? That's laggy as shit. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Uh welcome <laughs> to the me. Welcome to the Nerd Ledger. Uh we're the nerds. I'm Cage. Chair's down there. Phoenix is over there. What up? And we're all here. We're all here, yeah. Phoenix is here again oh, because we're, we're talking about Star Wars again. The council <laughs> is assembled. <clears throat> yeah. But we uh yeah, we all love Star Wars <laughs> here. And we thought it would be fun to do like um just actually just review the movies because the the only ones i've ever actually reviewed are the the sequels you know as uh mm. as they were releasing i did a, i did reviews of those um but i haven't actually like looked critically at any of the other star wars movies so mm. uh it should be interesting yeah we chose um we chose a new hope you know you gotta start at the beginning yeah and uh got a lot of things to say as always yeah also um sorry i'm eating a- it's okay <laughs> um phoenix knows this already because i told her earlier but um i have an update on my car um oh <laughs> so uh so i've, I've kept chair your, your pretty- camera's completely frozen by the way it is not frozen it is completely frozen on my screen <laughs> he, his camera's not on on my screen my oh, camera? Yeah, my screen's completely frozen. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's on on the stream, okay, and it's not frozen, so we good. We're yeah. good. We good. You well, guys don't is. need to see. So me. what happened with your car? Oh, it's back now. We're good. Yeah. So Very um. Oh, look. So right, I'm the... put my feet over the desk, guys. Wake me up when you need me. All right. Well, well, you you have to hear the update too. No, I'm listening. I'm oh, listening. Okay. Go ahead, buddy. Right. I love you. All right. So right. I've kept Cher pretty well uh, abreast of the situation, and he's tried to give me some advice, and I've just ignored him. Um, okay. <laughs> but uh, essentially, is it, it's is it good advice? How it... No, no, it is. It is. He used to work at a law office and stuff, and he's like, "Hey, there's probably programs out there that can help you." And I'm like, yeah, it "Sounds incredibly inconvenient and annoying and expensive." So, um, yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff, mm-hmm. but. Uh, but essentially the last time i talked about my car for those for those who maybe don't know uh, my car was parked uh out front of my house legally on the street and someone decided it'd be fun to drive into it and uh, flip their vehicle and um yeah so i talked about that before but uh, i got the police report finally and 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 they have no insurance so that's that um yep just as i predicted and uh and yeah, the the adjuster came out and he was like, "Yeah, it's probably about nine and a half thousand dollars in damage, and it's it's perfectly repairable, and you should be all good." And so it got towed to a shop, and obviously we do mm-hmm. all the, you know. There's the pre work. We call the shop and say, "Hey, do you have room for my car? Do you, are you you able to fix it?" And they said, "Yeah, no problem. Bring your car." And so the tow truck driver came and brought my car, and my car was there a total of two days before they said, we don't have the space or the time to fix it. And so the they sent nice. it to a, a, a another shop that, like, they're all in the same family of mechanics. Um, <laughs> yep. and, uh, and so they've had it for a week and a half now, and I haven't heard anything. And so I called them today, and I was like, hey, yo, uh, can I get a... More than reasonable. I was like, can I get out? I'm proud of you, by the way, for call. I'm proud of you, by the way, for calling in. I'm proud of you. I know you. you said you hated that a I, lot. I hate so talking. So I'm proud that you were able to get on the get on the phone and call someone and <laughs> let people know that you need something. And mm-hmm. just continue. Yeah. Also, hold on. Before I continue, I'll leave you in suspense. Um, it was brought to my attention Got last it. week. I'm edged. It, it was brought to my attention last week that uh, if you follow this this stream on Twitch, uh. There's a month delay before you could type in chat. Um, oh, I have I have fixed that now. I apologize. I was unaware. Uh, much love. Thank you to uh, to the home girl uh, who who let me know. Um, mm. Because holy shit, that's fucked up. <laughs> so yeah, that's fixed. Yeah, so, we were like we were like, hey, everyone, join the chat, comment, you know, and then no one commented, and we wondered why. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I like I know, like a lot of chats have like a fifteen minute thing. Like you can't type in chat for fifteen minutes after following, bro. A fucking month. Who defaulted that on our shit? Because it wasn't it wasn't either of us, so it must have been defaulted. Anyway, back to my car. So yeah, I called yes. the shop, um, and I was like, hey, can I get an update? And so the guy 
so I was on hold for a little bit because the guy was with a customer or something. So he's like, yeah, I've been looking at your car. And he's like, we had, you know, we had to take it apart a lot and like look at all these different things. And he's like, he's, he's like, I'm going to be honest. Uh, oh, before I get to this, hold on. Because uh, I had spoke with the adjuster initially after he gave me the 9.5K in damages thing estimate. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, I was like, well, I mean, and even, even we talked about it and you were like, bro, isn't your axle messed up? Like, isn't that like a total loss already kind of thing? And, um, you know, I, I was talking to the adjuster about it. I was like, I was like, do you think it's possible like that they'll find more damages? And he's like, not enough to total it. He's like, but the, the estimate would have to more than double, right? Keep that in mind. 9.5 K. Um, the, the, the estimator at the repair shop, the people who actually are going to charge the money to repair it. Uh, he said, he said, I haven't finished with the estimate. And if I include $300 more in damages from what I already have numbers for, uh, you'll be beyond the threshold of total car. Um, and I was like, Oh, he said, he said, yeah, your, uh, transmission pan is cracked. Your oil pan is cracked and leaking everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, they didn't, uh, he said the adjuster didn't properly note that the door frame is bent and requires more time and parts to fix. He said, uh, so, so he's like, he's like, yeah, my, he's like, it depends on your insurance, but to me, this is a total loss. Um, he said, but I'll get it done today and, and they can decide if they want us to repair it or not. And he walked me through all that and I was like, okay. And, uh, yeah, his estimate is finished. Uh, $21,000 in damage. So, uh, yeah, dude, I, when I saw that your wheel, when I saw that your wheel was shoved up into the wheel, well, I knew because there's a rod attached to the end of the wheel, right? That spins it. And like, yeah. it's a really solid piercer. It's a raw, it's really solid iron rod, dude. It's like a freaking spear. It's basically like a spear. And when that thing gets shoved back, it'll probably just shove through the rest of your car. Like, you know, cracked a bunch of shit and broke a bunch of stuff, and all kinds of other things. Yeah. yeah. So, which is why, cause my, <laughs> the adjuster had asked me how many miles are on the car. And so I, I was like, oh, it's like, it's like about 7,500. And he's like, well, can you take a picture of it? I said, I'm not turning on my car. <laughs> like there ain't no yeah. way I'm starting that shit. Well, it's not, it's not just on the odometer on the bottom. It usually reads out the, odometer, uh, the uh, some, uh, some I don't know. It's do. like all, it's, it's a, it's a brand new car. It's all like, like electric yeah, stuff. Like my, so yeah, like, well, it doesn't my, my, have 10,000 miles on it. Yeah. yeah but uh, I actually have an oh. app like compatible and I, and it has the mileage on it. And I was only nine miles off. It's 7,509. And I took a picture of it and sent it to him. And he said that works. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but yeah, like I, I get I, it. Like the, the insurance adjusters, like they work for the company. They're trying to protect, like they're trying to save as much money as possible for the company. So that like, but bro, to be off that much, like, I don't know. Like, is, isn't that like kind of like neglect? Like, if you're off by 12K, that's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. To be honest, there's there's no way that anyone in the field just looking at a wrecked car would know whether or not if something is, like, a a loss or not. You you need to pop the engine hood and look under the flame. You need to get it up on stilts and everything like that and look underneath it and do all this other stuff. So, yeah. Please go ahead, Phoenix. No, I was just saying that, you know, they're not, they're not, insurance companies really aren't really that much there for you, but. Yeah, no, they're not. Which kind of sucks when it comes to stuff fuck, like this, you know? They hate you. Like, you know, you got to fight, and you got to fight them every inch of the way. They, yeah. You know, they're just there to make money. And even it's like now, really fucked up. Like, if you... Go ahead. Even now, I don't know if they're going to turn around and say, fix it, or if they're going to turn around and say, don't fix it. It's a total loss. And that sucks because, bro, I need to know what the fuck I need to do. Do I need to go buy another car, which is going to... Mm. bro? Like, well, yeah, you know that now. Well, I don't know that because... The shop says it's a total loss, but my insurance may say, well, we'll just pay to repair it. Right? And the fact is, it's already been, you know, it, it, this. Do you the, think it, they would repair it? Do you think it's repairable? I, I don't know, but I, the shop well, says any, well, it's the, not worth it. But any, any, ve- any vehicle is fixable if you put enough money and grease and elbow grease into it. So there's that, like, you know, those old, like these old rat rods, right? Like, I always want to have a rat rod. It's just a Model T with a, with a VV8 on it or stuff like, something like that, you know, eight cylinder engine. It just goes hell fast. And they're able to do that because it's like a Model T. It's a Model T frame, like, you know, from the 1930s. Uh, so you just swap things around and, you know, you just got, you know, how to weld and stuff like that. You can, yeah, you can fix any I car mean, for they, sure. Yeah. It's, but now, it's are the they going to pay company. out, like, what do you say? 29k you said it was or whatever so so i owe like almost 27k on it it's worth probably about 22 23k so they'll pay Mm. that uh 
I I'm smart enough to have gap insurance. So the the gap insurance will cover the rest of the loan minus my deductible. So either way, whether they want to repair it or it's a total loss, my minimum that I have to pay is a thousand dollars. And if I have to get a new car, then I have to pay that as well. Like it's not like I get money and I can just go buy a new car. Like I gotta start from zero, you know. So. Thought it was. I thought it was in case of total loss of a car that they would cover you for purchasing a new vehicle. And maybe that's a different kind of policy. Oh yeah, or something I don't. Like that. I don't know anybody that. Are you talking about for gap insurance? Yeah, or something like that. No. Like I thought if your if insurance so, declares it like a total loss, like they can go after the other person. They're like you know. Have oh, to they'll go after the car. other person, but they don't have insurance, and they they don't even. How do, yeah. There's no way. I, yeah. There's they. There's no way they'll find them. Unfortunately. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Like the the guy obviously had an ID because he had an address on his ID, but I, I promise you he doesn't live there. Mm. So, and and yeah, I know he doesn't live there because my wife has seen those people who hit my car walking around up by the river because they live afterwards. There. Like like a afterwards. week ago, yeah. Like after it happened, yeah. Yeah. And it's been it's been like two and a half weeks now, so. Again, yeah. even if they decide, okay, we'll repair it, bro, that's another month. <laughs> like, like, I, I don't was know. Was the car stolen? My car or their car? No, no, no it was they. They owned it. Oh, okay. Yeah. But and their car got totaled. No idea. They don't. They do don't. Do you care? No. Do they care? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I probably because most of their belongings were in it. Yeah. So. Bro, their entire yeah, yeah, living room was out on the, on the side of the road, man. So, yeah. Wild. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's hard to know what I'm supposed to do, <laughs> and so like I just I'm just yeah. waiting. So, I'll probably like email or text the Geico adjuster tomorrow and ask if he has an update. But, um, yeah, yeah. And to like you know uh, with these adjusters and everything like that. And if you you don't know like you know you just gotta wait and call and see what the, you have to call and see what they say is like the best option you have right now because it's all it's well it's not insurance. up to me it's up to them yeah because yeah, they're well, gonna pay, yeah, they're exactly. gonna pick the option where they pay the least money yeah right like they're the ones who decide if it's worth repairing or not so yeah but anyway um I hope everyone's doing well uh and I'm excited to talk yeah, about well, Star Wars. Okay. Yeah, and at least you have your like you still have a vehicle, you know, for access is the most important part. Um, yeah, I mean, I can if oh. worst case I can rent a car, but I'll still have to pay out of pocket a bit for it. Yeah. Which is annoying. You uh, should call the rent and see what they say about uh, the insurance and see what they say about that. I think could have sworn there was probably a policy for that unless you're worried that they'll put I, you I like the worst rental. I do have a policy rental. for it, but it's limited. So they they pay oh. like like $25 a day. Oh. So um um but anyway um is uh, have you watched a new hope recently chair no but i remember but i watched it a lot when i was a kid so yeah. like i have the whole movie in the back of my head yeah do, you, do have you looked at it with a critical eye uh yeah i did a long last year around this around this certain time remember when i watched all the star wars episodes then i reaffirmed my belief that episode two is just garbage hot garbage um, you know, I, I, I had watched, I, I went into New Hope and everything like that. And, you know, the thing I think that really took me away with is that I'm, again, like, you know, when you take like robots, like literal machines and you make them like personable, but still make them feel like robots. Like, you know, it's, that's something critical right there. Like that's, and making R2D2 like so cute and, but like make it like a, a cute little bubbly companion. And the fact that it's like still very much a robot, it's such a skillful way of doing things. Yeah. Like, I don't know also the, the personality it. that R2-D2 has without ever muttering yeah. a single word, you know, it's pretty incredible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Plucky little robot. And so, yeah, and, you know, all, all of them's good. Like, the Harrison Ford is fantastic as Han Solo. And, you know, our Camel's great as yeah. Luke Skywalker. And, I mean, yeah, you know, it's just a quid such a star. <laughs> the sets look great. Yeah, there's cheesy parts, but, like, they get a pass because it's the 80s and they're still figuring out how movies work. And, like, the 70s, you know, but yeah. It was the 70s, even worse. And, like, you know, the, the sets they had them on. I remember watching that the special that they had on Disney Plus, you know, like, it must have been so hard to act. Like, even now it's just all green screens. Back in the day, they had them, like, in, like, crazy little setups where they were, like, literally shaking the cockpit back and forth. And they had to, like, basically pay, play make believe. Like, even more to the sense where more actors were dealing with on stage. So, you know, and they made it look really good. 
and yeah. it's yeah I, I think I think it's but interesting yeah, it to look at A New Hope like now as an adult and just like look at it as what it is and mm. what it obviously what it means not only for Star Wars but for everything uh, but also just like in its own context you know as well as the greater context of, of Star Wars so um, I'm ready to jump into this you know what I'm saying uh, and, well I do have one thing to say yeah, yeah, yeah. before we do yeah um there's one thing that i guess is like different which i don't know how much it makes it makes a difference but i feel like it does to me i oh i guess like none of us did i guess none of us did either but i know that you guys have probably have seen maybe a like vhs original viewing because the only star wars a new hope or even the all the original trilogy i've seen on disney plus i've never seen like the original cuts and that's what like bothers me so much is that like i don't get that raw emotion that i did like that everyone else did like the fact that just said star wars like i just i just turned a new hope on a couple hours before we started this not a couple hours obviously it's still playing Mm. but um you know the first thing it does it says episode four new hope and i'm like wait when people went to the theaters and saw that it didn't say that you know because it wasn't a new hope then it was just star wars and i'm like i never got that experience and it did, bugs the hell out of me. Did the cut so, you watch have the 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 Java scene in the hangar? Do you remember that with the CGI? The, Java? No, does, oh my does, gosh, yeah. there exactly. I have yeah. never seen the OG. I've never seen the OG part of that, and it bugs the shit out of me because there. I'm like, I don't want to see. There. there is no Java. OG. There, yeah, there, there is no OG nothing. part. Yeah, they, they shot that, that scene, but it. Yeah, they shot that scene, but they did it with like an actor, and then they they um. Wait 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 wait. In 1977, that scene did not exist. It it did, but no, it was it cut. Existed, but it was cut because they shot Jabba with like this actor who was like yeah. this big, jolly green giant. Is that his actual like, guy? Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's yeah, so who they you were guys gonna... all saw that. I want to see that. No, no, we didn't yeah, see it. YouTube. We saw it as a deleted scene on YouTube. I'll I'll send so it to what you. Was the scene? Then there was, what was no the scene. scene then? There was I don't no understand scene. what you guys are saying. No, you said it's, deleted scene. No, it's, yeah, yeah. So it just cuts like the, like you don't see Han go to the hangar and meet Jabba like we don't see any of that all you see is like it cuts from literally like Luke and Obi-Wan coming into the hangar like there's no like there's no scene of Han going into the hangar after killing Greedo like all that was added that's why Boba Fett was like Boba Fett so can I talk yeah so in 1977 there was no Jabba the Hutt scene no not in the movie no thank you yeah. Because there was. They they filmed no, one, the, so but it scene, wasn't in the final cut one, of the movie. They yeah. they filmed one, but they cut it out. They filmed the scene and then they cut it out, and then way later in the two thousand, nineteen ninety seven, they added it special back edition. in, or ninety seven. Okay. Yeah, or maybe it was the two thousand five special edition. Happened. I don't remember. Yeah, I think they. I think it was the two thousands when they added it back in because they CGI it over Jabba. And then they kept the the well, they edited that scene out. Yeah, like, they added Boba Fett as well because he was really weird. How, that. It, yeah, it's really weird how they did it all and stuff. And like you know, it's well, just, um, wait a second, they added Boba Fett in two thousand five. No, or they, they, yeah, they put him CGI in the back. They put him CGI in the. No, background. I remember. No, well, it, it's not CGI. I remember. Well, it can't be CGI. They probably just put someone in and oh, yeah. put someone in that scene because I remember. They just superimpose him into him, the scene. Just walk behind him. Yeah, yeah. They just superimpose huh? him into the scene. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sense. on board now. What yeah. else is like that? What, is there anything else that I'm? What else is different? Uh, the lightsaber <laughs> color is a bit different. Um, yep. I'm not sure what else. I like obviously like the the visual effects are different. Like you could see. Really? I didn't know I that. A... I thought it was just the name. I honestly thought it was just the name and the CGI part of Java that's what i've heard i have a de- i have like a degenerate things that are different <laughs> like specifically for like episode six no um do you know the dan do you know the dancer yeah 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 you, she was like you see so you could see her you could actually like see her like her like full exposed breasts like you know areolas and everything in the original episode six vhs cut when she was dancing around yeah like, I, have, just, I have that one they, there's the yeah <laughs> Oh uh, what well, so well, the VHS uh, the VHSs were ah uh, Ula <laughs> Yeah the the VHSs were um Stormtrooper Yoda was it Vader? Yep. Was... 
No, the Rancor, the Rancor too. They changed the Rancor. No, no, no. I mean the like the VHS oh. tapes. They had ha- the half faces on each of them, right? Yeah. Do you remember the bo- the 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 box graphic? I remember. I think Episode Four was a stormtrooper. <laughs> some... Yeah, or something. Episode Five was I, Yoda. I don't know. Like... Episode Six, I think, was Vader. So I anyway. used to ha- I used to have some I used to have some of the VHSs. I don't know where they are now. Um, I used to watch them when I went up to my. Uh, 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 cabin we have we had family used to have in the woods and like we watched the old VHSs it was a really good time yeah I know we had them maybe I'll maybe I'll message my dad and see see if he still has them and if he does I can have him send them out and like find an old VHS player and we can watch the original cuts yeah because I was going to be like wait a second where are we going to have a VHS player <laughs> well, yeah. fuck, freaking so go find Grandpa, Grandpa Bell yeah I'll, yeah, I'll go I'll go Hopefully, do they uh, Bill, Bill, no, Bill's got to have one though. Bill's old, old as fuck, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll go to a storage somewhere. see if there's one in there. Exactly, brother. Exactly. He's got one from the harbor. Yeah. Um, okay, so the best place to start with Star Wars is always anyone, anyone. In space. Hope? Yeah, in space. The opening and crawl. A, yeah. You know, in a galaxy, in a, in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. So I'll, <laughs> I'll read the opening crawl for A New Hope. Uh, and okay. we'll just examine that for a little bit because I think it's interesting. Uh, I agree. All right. <clears throat> it is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, Rebel spies managed to steal secret plans to the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star, an armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. Pursued by the Emperor's sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard her starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. So that's the whole thing. Um, that's the whole thing. That's it, really. No, this the crawls are actually really short. You'd be surprised until you actually you don't realize. Yeah, they're just really slow. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. So I'll just like point out the first the first thing that I noticed was, like, forgive me for my if I mess up it mess up the direct quote, but it says, like, the emperor sets out his like sinister agents. Mm-hmm. So sinister agents meaning Vader, right? Yeah. Well, it's a funny well, term. I don't know. It reminds me of like an. It's a. It reminds me of an inquisitor. You know. Well, it's it's um. It's not just Vader, right? It's all the governors from the different star systems, uh, like Tarkin and those guys, uh, and admirals and everybody, and then obviously stormtroopers. The right? regional governors. You're calling them agents too. Well, yeah, they're all agents of the Empire. They're like governors of the Empire. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. But I mean, also just the, so. Um, there's like a little discrepancy like between this and like kind of what is said in in the movie, right? Where it, it, like here it talks about the the rebel spies stealing secret plans, which mm-hmm. which is true. But in the movie, it's about they intercepted a transmission, and I guess you can make it work, right? Because like technically, like. That they, they did send a transmission from Scarif, right? And and whatever. But they wouldn't you wouldn't say they intercepted it like they received that transmission. It was meant for them for the plans. Are you saying like when they're on the ship, they're talking about how they received a transmission, not that they literally have the physical plans in her hands, because we do see that at some point. Yeah, no, but like the the plans came from a transmission. Like and and what Vader says is is you know you 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 know they intercepted a transmission with the plans and like that's different than them stealing them. I mean they did oh, okay they well, it is stealing steal it is stealing she did steal it is them stealing. and transmit them. Yeah, but but it sounds like my impression from watching the movie if if I had never seen anything else Star Wars. My impression. You're right. I have to take new. I have to take Rogue One out, out of this. Yeah, like my impression from from this movie alone would be that the empire was transmitting plans to somewhere and the rebels intercepted that transmission. Are you saying that rogue one is in the movie made 20 years later is 100% consistent with what happens exactly in a new hope? I'm saying that most of star Wars is not that consistent. No, it's not. Um, but I love but it though. I mean, I, the I core is, is, but like, you know, 
I think it's consistent in the best ways. <clears throat> that, yeah. I, I think we can all agree to that. So, um, but yeah, the the opening crawl. I mean, it it gives you it gives you what a fantasy movie should give you, which is depth, like or this this idea that there's a lot of depth going on here, right? Like, bro, we got this galactic empire. We have these agents of the emperor, whoever that is. It doesn't even show up in the movie, you know. Like, there's there's so much like going on that you're just like immediately part of the action as well. The the fucking massive star destroyer just slowly, you know what I'm saying? It's fucking yep, sick. lasers. Yeah, but it is interesting though because you know talking about how George Lucas never, it's not like he never planned on having more movies. It's just like he didn't expect it. And the fact that you never introduce a, a character that you talk about to be so scary, it's like, I don't know. Do you think he had high hopes? Like, do you think he really was planning on taking one? I I just feel like. There was no plans for anything else, and we just were left with a lot of open-ended things. I think he put so much into this movie that uh, like he would definitely be open to more, obviously, and expanding that kind of thing. But I don't think he set out thinking, I'm going to make a trilogy of this. Like He set out and put everything into right. making this movie as good as he could, you know? Which is really yeah. interesting because the but next it's, movie. Is okay, better. so say say this movie was a say this movie was a standstill. You never got any movie after this. It was the one and only. Oh, have you seen Star Wars? It's just Star Wars. How would you feel? Um, I think that the Star Wars, like the quality of A New Hope, is so good that I would, well, at least I hope so. That it would be like a cult classic, you know, like a lot of cult. Classics. I don't think I'd be satisfied. I think I don't have too many open-ended questions. I mean, yeah, yeah that's that's true because like you know when you when you leave off i mean then again it doesn't really end because it kind of implies like the empire is like all beaten and oh we beat the empire after like you know they blew up the death star because they got that big procession scene where they're putting like but a bunch vader's of metal still alive we, we know vader's still alive he, he got shot and he's like spinning off into space right you like, can see him like he's all mad in his chamber i don't know i don't remember seeing that scene i remember just him spinning off like you know him spinning off in his uh yeah but he does go i do watch i hate i'm not gonna be like weird about this i do watch this movie a lot like a lot at least once a month oh yeah he gets shot he goes what shaking (laughs) yeah well no because yeah like he's just spinning off but there's he's spinning but he's like mad he's like he's in it he's you know we see Uh, i think he's trying to stabilize he's like messing with his knobs and shit yeah um But I don't know, but I just feel like if seeing seeing this in theaters, like again, like in the seventies or in the eighties or whatever the original release date was, um, you know, I, I just think that like it, watch May fifth, nineteen seventy seven, right? Nineteen seventy seven, yeah, or something like that. May the, I thought it was the fourth, wasn't it? No, it's like it the fourth be with you, isn't? No, no. Well, oh, then well. it wasn't the fifth either. I don't know why where that came I, from. I don't think it's the. 5th I have no either, idea either. I think it's I think it's middle oh. of May. But I'm always in a state of being turned around, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we should find we should find that out. Yeah, the original date be good Star Wars fans probably be important to know. Um, but I'm just saying though, like, you know, you go in, you watch the movie, they're fighting the Empire, they, they get the thing, they blow up the Empire May thing, 25th. the bad guy gets like the ship next to him gets blown up and he's like spinning off into space, like, you know, and then it just cuts to them like, you know, flying away after the and thing. And then got they blown get up. medals. And then they get medals and like, you know, da 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 you know they get all the medals and everything's happy and then they like look all happy and then like you know you get the da 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 yeah they do kind of do a celebratory ending i agree with that so that like that that to me keeps it pretty close like you know we know it now is like just one battle against the empire but back in the day seeing this in theaters you're probably like oh wow they beat they blew up their start like you know they blew up the death star like you know they saved because you know this back they were used to a much simpler story version of storytelling back in the day right like the you know, they flew up there. They blew up the bad thing. The bad guys are beat forever. We don't have to worry about the Empire anymore, you know? Yeah. So I, I think I was seeing now, like, it's, it's how, like, you know, oh, the Empire will be back. But back in the day, like, again, like, oh, they got them. They blew up the evil thing. They got the, the, the bad guys flying off into space or, like, you know, spinning off into space or whatever. They they flew back. They got the medals. Game was hacked. No, that's true. It's like, yeah, like, maybe we don't need to know who the Emperor is because at that point in time, everything was Yeah, or maybe you just assume, Andy. like, the, the Emperor is, like, on the space station or something, you know? You don't really know that. You just He gets, like, brought up once, and then it's like, oh, he dissolved the Imperial Senate, and now, like, everyone needs to be afraid of this battle station to keep the Empire. See, that's another thing. Like, the only reason people, the Empire will stay together is because of the battle station, you know, like what Tarkin was saying. Yeah. So, to kind of circle back to last week, and you can tell me if I'm completely wrong, 
is this like an example of a good mystery box like emperor like the not knowing what who the emperor ever was not noting not knowing vader's fate because you just see him spinning off and then still being like satisfied is that right um uh, i think the a mystery box like implies a, I mean I think the force is more of a mystery box than anything I think is the best way to describe it like you know, the you force just, is the most easily understandable thing in Star Wars ever you just okay. have magic power <laughs> like I am, although, I am sorry that is the those, thing that makes the most sense in those first everything. couple of movies though they didn't make a lot of sense like there's this mysterious energy that come, connects and binds everyone called the force and you can manipulate it like special people can manipulate it like you know that's like no, you, have train, you, know? you have to train, you know? You have to learn from yeah, a Jedi, yeah. and the Jedi are all but extinct, so who are you going to learn from? From you, a Jedi. But they're all dead, just, except for you don't have to beat it. You don't have to be a Jedi in order to feel the Force. Everyone can feel the Force around them. Yeah. Oh, you, sorry. It, it, you're a Jedi if you learn to wield the Force. What I, meant to say, what I meant to say Everyone is... Everyone lives with the Force every day, even in this lifetime, and you can... That's kind of far off but you know what i mean yeah what yeah, i meant to say is they're all like... dead except for obi-wan ahsoka ezra yoda um kanan mm. who else <laughs> oh, all the jedi where it's convenient oh, like for the plot <laughs> yeah oh uh, uh no, um... it's just me and him are talking shit about like you know the order 66 thing was like pretty cut and dry like oh it was the genocide of the jedi like you know they were all gunned down well i mean and then you we know, don't even need order 66 for that extra... we get it in this movie yeah all this extra con all the extra content comes out like oh yeah there's still a bunch of jedi kicking around by the way order 66 almost completely finished. <laughs> no but they explain it though they say okay we did order 66 but there are still thousands of other jedi in the galaxy that we have to go find mm. yeah but even in this movie like, he they... tells vader that at the end of Revenge of the sith but anyway even in a new hope that obi-wan explains to luke like vader helped the emperor hunt down and kill the last of the jedi and he said, now we're all but extinct, pretty much, right? Which is, could yeah. still be open-ended, right? It could still mean, like, there are still more Jedi out there, just very, very, very few. Um, it's a but... very big galaxy, you know? And at that point, it had been almost 20 years. Two yeah. decades is a long time. That's a lot of Jedi to kill. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And and the EU... I was about that. And, like, you know, it, yeah. it makes the plot better, obviously. So there's that, too. Yeah. It, it just allows for more stories. But um, I think... I think that a new hope by itself is it could just be its own movie obviously in today's world with hollywood like they would just you know beat the shit out of it by making sequels and whatever if it, if it had only been trash one movie. It, in my opinion i mean we see we've you know we already talked about how they've done that to today's sequels i think it like i think yeah. share may have said this already I think that it's so good because of the time it was in like yeah yeah the but, simplicity of it, like, it was just satisfying. Honestly, sometimes when I watch Star Wars, I feel like what really happened is that George Lucas, like, what, there was a lot of science, there's this, like, you know, a lot of science fiction movies and a lot of, like, fantasy, like, you know, sword and sorcery movies were coming out at the time, right? And I feel like George just, like, watched a lot of the fan, like, a lot of the science fiction ones, and, like, dude, these are all so fucking stupid. Like, you know, like, how you sometimes when you're watching something, you're like, I could do something better. Or when George Lucas was in a position to actually, like, okay, you know what? I'm, like, a director. I work in an... I work in California, like, you know, I have access to all these props and everything like that. I really feel like I can make something better than what's out there. And then he went and he did it, and it was amazing. It was, like, phenomenal. You know, like, Galaxy, like, all these other Galaxy Star, or, like, Galaxy of Hero, like, all these other weird, like, sci-fi movies that came out. They were so corny and cheesy, and they didn't take themselves very seriously. You know, and I feel like Star Wars took itself very seriously, and that translated, to in the quality of the movie, and it found it a new I home. mean, they also got an incredible cast, <laughs> too, like, you that, know. Like... That, too, you know. Yeah, and I again I think that speaks to how George you know George was again like you know he was working like at the time he was a working director like he knew Harrison Ford from uh, American Greece or what it was American, was Graffiti. American Graffiti was yeah, Harrison so. Ford like a big actor already back then? He was uh, kind of he's kind of kind of like because he was American Graffiti was a really popular movie when it came out. It's like, like Indiana really Jones came out like right afterwards, you know. So yeah, uh, so, you know, came yeah that, out uh, when did it start? Seventy nine, like eighty two. Was it was it eighty two eighty five eighty eight or seventy nine eighty two eighty five? I believe the it must have been eighty two. I know that it was. I know it was in between Star Wars. I know it was like Star Wars indie, Star Wars indie, Star Wars yeah. indie. That's how I feel. Because Empire came out in eighty, and he was working on Raiders of the Lost Ark during that. So was it eighty one? I think it was eighty. Um, Alexa, what year did Raiders of the Lost Ark come out? Prometheus Sedona. 
The film Raiders of the Lost Ark was released on June 12, 1981. There you go. 81. 81. Yeah, I had it after a while. When did uh, yeah. A New Hope come out? A New Hope came out in 77. May 25th. So, yeah. Yeah. Did you look so that we're up? We're yes. both LucasArts projects. So. That's where I got the five. That's where I got the five. I knew I wasn't crazy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think it's. I think by itself, A New Hope works. I mean, it, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of simplicity around it, and for the time it was made and whatever. But as a story, mm. like, it's there. There is a little bit more complexity kind of buried in there. Um, like if you're looking at it from a storytelling analytical perspective, I mean, the villain of the movie or the antagonist is not Darth Vader. It's not the Empire. It's not stormtroopers. the The antagonist of the movie is Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> it's true, right? Like Luke. Luke. Really? The uh, think about it this way, right? What prevents Luke from destroying the Death Star? There's only one thing preventing Luke from destroying the Death Star. Exactly, because Luke he doesn't give a shit. Hey, he's in the meeting at the end. They said they said uh, there's a thermal exhaust port two meters wide. Luke said, "Hey, bruh." I used to bullseye womp rants in my T-16 back home. They're no more than two meters away. Bro <laughs> has all the confidence in the world. But you know what? He so, couldn't destroy the Death Star until he believed in something greater than himself. Until he put his nav computer up and believed in the Force. Once he, once he let go of his own thing, that's when he could destroy the Death Star. Darth Vader wasn't stopping him. The Empire wasn't stopping him. Nobody was stopping him. The only person stopping him is himself so if you're looking again at, a, at it from an analytical like storytelling perspective he is the antagonist and the protagonist right and that's what i mean by there's little complexities in there and that's why it's okay that darth vader just spins off into space because his story in this movie was killing obi-wan so obi-wan could become one with the force right like that's his purpose I, you're, you know what you have made me see this movie in a completely different light like it's totally good on its own yeah. you know feels yeah. very complete actually because you yeah. do see that and, and, and then Han gets the some end, money at the end too like everybody's story is satisfied and, and then forgive me do we ever see obi-wan's force ghost at the end of this movie no okay so we don't know what happens to him we, we, well, we he don't just, but, but his body dis his body disappears like you know i think that's the most are important you sure thing. we don't see him at the end we don't see him no Okay. We well, just hear, we his hear voice. him though. Oh wait, yeah. wait, the yeah. credits are still on. I could just back I could just I could just rewind. Yeah, we, we hear we hear it, him. Yeah. Like, you know, he says the horse the force will be with you always. Like, yeah, that's the that. last we hear of him, and then we just see the celebration at the very end, uh, and then it cuts the credits. So Yeah, I think you went back way too far. <laughs> I don't know how fast I don't know I know. Bro, you got the whole the ceremony still to go. <laughs> That was like two seconds of me rewinding. It's fine. We'll get there. Yeah. But maybe you guys, can, maybe we can, uh, we can see the spinning out scene. But yeah, um, I heard that we were going to do a little table read action at some point. We will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to like go through any of the, any of the proof that George Lucas didn't have this thing completely planned from the start, but uh, uh, we can do the table read. Oh no. I mean, um, I mean, I could say that everywhere, but I was yeah. thinking we could just go down and uh, go with yeah. the flow, figure yeah. out. You know what I mean? Yeah, let's do let's do the table read, yeah. Um, so we're gonna do we're gonna do a table read, guys. We're gonna we're gonna do a scene from A New Hope. We're all gonna have a role. I don't know who's gonna be who yet. I don't know if we want to randomize it, draw straws or whatever. Um, but we're gonna do the the Moss Eisley Cantina scene, and uh, it should be fun. It should be fun. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll do the narration and then um, wh who do you want to be Phoenix well uh, oh gosh I was like kind of so I was kind of thinking I kind of want to do the whiny Luke okay Chair do you want to do Is Han or, or Obi-Wan I'll do Obi-Wan alright fair enough fair enough alright does everybody have their scripts ready yeah, I think I'm at the wrong part, though. I got to scroll to the right hey, one. Give me uh, one second. Okay. It was easy to send it to Cher <laughs> because I, I could text him the thing, but it was too long to text to you because Instagram and Discord both have a, a text limit. Character limit? Yeah. 
So I just sent you the whole script. <laughs> so you have to go through to the part where it says, Int Tatooine, Moss Eisley Cantina. Stranger. It's not strangers. Strange Wait. creatures. Hold on. Give me a second. <clears throat> Honestly, I could probably just take pictures of it and send it to you. <laughs> I'm just scrolling, trying to... Oh, wait. Strange creatures no, play exotic afterwards. big band music on odd-looking instruments. Oh, I, <laughs> I see. I, I'm, that's I'm that's here. a classic I'm here. line. Yeah. I love I'm reading here. scripts. I'm ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> Who right. am I? You're Luke. Who am I? You're whiny Luke. Okay. <laughs> hey, <clears throat> I gotta get ready. <clears throat> All right. Uh... In Tatooine, Mos Eisley Cantina, strange creatures play exotic big band music on odd-looking instruments as Luke, still giddy, downs a fresh drink and follows Ben and Chewbacca to a booth where Han Solo is sitting. Han is a tough, roguish star pilot about 30 years old. A mercenary on a starship, he is simple, sentimental, and cocksure. Holy fuck. They said cocksure. <laughs> okay. He's cocksure, bro. He's cocked and ready to go. <laughs> All right. Ain't about that. All right, let's do this. Han Solo, captain of the Millennium Falcon. Chewie here tells me you're looking to uh, you're looking for passage to the Alderaan system. Yes, indeed. If it's a fast ship. Fast ship? You never heard of the Millennium Falcon? Should I have? It's the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than twelve parsecs. Oh, oh sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Ben Ben reacts to Solo's stupid attempt Solo's... to impress them with obvious misinformation. Misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not impressed, buddy. <laughs> I've outrun Imperial starships, not the local bull cruisers, mind you. I'm talking about the big Karelian ships now. She's fast enough for you, old man. What's the cargo? Only passengers, myself, the boy, two droids, and no questions asked. What is it? Some kind of local trouble? Let's just say we like to avoid any Imperial entanglements. Well, that's the trick, isn't it? And it's going to cost you something extra. 10000 in advance. 10000 We could almost buy our own ship for that! But who's going to fly it, kid? You? You bet I could. I'm not such a bad pilot myself. We don't have to stay here and listen. We haven't that much with us, but we can pay you 2000 now. Plus 15 when we reach Alderaan. 17, huh? Han ponders this for a moment. Okay. You got your you guys got yourself a ship. We'll leave, we'll leave as soon as you're ready. Docking bay 94. 94. All right, good job guys. Good job. Well good done. Good job. <laughs> First table read for the nerd ledger. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was that was good. That was good. I messed up a couple lines, you know, here and there, but you know what I'm saying? It's all right. Yeah, it was rough for me too. It was rough. It was. I was trying to hold back tears. It was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me when I was in fourth grade and I did a play, of The Lion King, and I got such stage fright that my teacher pulled me aside and said I sucked as an actor, and that's where my career ended. That's the last time I read a script. So. All right. Wow. Well, uh, your teacher can suck my balls, um, <laughs> because that's just rude. That's just rude. Teachers shouldn't yeah. destroy kids' hopes and dreams. Teachers should help build you up. Yeah. I agree. Or at I least agree. give you, let you know, like, all right, kid, if you want to do this, you got to do this. You got to do this. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I'd say I did. We were ten out of ten on that one. Yeah, I mean, and, and the thing is, like Cher always says, Star Wars is all about the quotes, and uh, there's a lot of uh, well-known quotes from Star Wars that are completely wrong, like, uh, only Imperial Stormtroopers are so precise, uh, because Stormtroopers <laughs> can't know. hit shit. You know, I've actually read a theory that um, the reason Stormtroopers are missing so much in uh, A New Hope is because the dark, because they needed to let them escape the Death Star with the tracker on board so that the, the Stormtroopers are intentionally missing all their shots. What? You know, uh, that so out that there. they could find the hidden Rebel base. By letting them escape yeah. with the tracker on the on the Millennium Falcon, then they can find the yeah, Rebel base the, that they've been looking for and blow up the planet. That's why so the they trained... Are... They trained them to be bad, so no, they're no, they didn't train them to be bad. They, they probably just they told them like, them don't, to don't hit them. The, the stormtrooper, the stormtroopers are such good soldiers that they can intentionally miss their shots. 
But that's like, it's like a well-known joke, though. Yeah, it is. It is now. But I'm just saying. Like, like I you know, can't see a thing. I'm in just saying, but in, you know, in you the, like in the in the books, though, like the stormtroopers are like the best of the best of the Imperial Army. Like you know, and it's just funny that they're getting. But like, what reduced. came out first? Yeah. Who is uh, the more the foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? <laughs> I'm stuck on a roof, guys. I don't know how to get down from here. Hey, it doesn't matter you make, where. You do not need to see identification. Yeah. You make. You may go. Chair, it doesn't matter oh, yeah, a, where you fall from trick, or though. how far, far you fall, <laughs> you'll always end up on the ground. That is true. But I, in this case, there's an invisible wall that's stopping me from falling where I need to get up from. So I'm, I'm, playing a video game. I'm like really stuck. This sucks because I need to get to where I'm supposed to be. You know, you guys, please talk to me. I'm going to you know, also be here to comment. <laughs> Phoenix is so confused. Is that English? Yeah, he's playing yeah. a video game. He's stuck on a roof. You're playing a video game while you're talking to us right now? Well, yeah, it's around 6.30. I, you know, we usually when we end and then I meet up with my guild mates and stuff. Like, I'm I did the really read. Offended. No, I did the I stop everything. I did the read. Put on a t-shirt. I have permission. Oh I have for one, one, I have permission from, from Cage to do this. And two, you can take off that shirt whenever you feel like it. Okay. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, oh, oh. Okay. okay, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Nope. Hey. <laughs> All right. With those, with those being said, uh, yeah, the, the, usually like six thirty is around time, but we went over like to like seven last time. So like you know, I was I was gaming last time and sort of so. Like... I don't know. I think that's a pretty good cue for us to <laughs> transition off of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah transition yeah. off to a yep. new hope. Like, well, we're still talking about a new hope, though, right? Like, you know, oh, like, yeah. if it's self-contained, like, what about it? Like, no one talked about my part, like. Again, like they made robots like personable, like they made them very charismatic. Like that's Absolutely. like a that's like an achievement in cinema. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, the thing is, like uh, something I think that's that goes missing on modern audiences is that like I think a lot of people find C three PO to just be so fucking annoying that it takes them out of the movie. Like like I I've talked to people who like they didn't watch Star Wars as a kid. They came later in life. Um, and they're like, bro, like, I don't get the dynamic with C-3PO and R2-D2. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense. Why are they yelling at each other? What's going on? Like, he's just annoying. All he does is complain. And it's like, well, yeah. But people say that about Jar Jar now, too. And nobody said that. Sh well, now at least kids, when we saw them, when I saw them fucking Star Wars in 1999, Phantom Menace, bro, I didn't sit there and complain about Jar Jar. He's just a random character. He's, you know, he's funny, whatever. Yeah. So, like, I think that's, that's another thing. Well, I don't I saw know. I... I, uh, I I watched A New Hope, actually. I was like, I feel like I just watched this. It's because I watched it on Christmas with my mom. And the first thing she said before we put it on, she goes, I just love C-3PO. And I look at her and I'm like, what did she just say? Like, I thought I knew this woman. Knew I No idea. I mean, I don't agree with her, but I thought it was very enlightening. She was, she was 10 years old when she saw it at the drive-in, the local drive-ins that we all know and love. So, yeah. Um, you know that's the that's a like the i think it's a good point because like ultimately the question always comes up or like something we need to ponder is george lucas has said many times star wars is for kids yeah and especially episode one like the phantom menace yeah. like this is very yeah. obviously a, a children's movie and, like, and as is... such as adults should we be like so harshly judging these things based on like the fact that it's not really for us like totally oh, i didn't even think about it that way like um so uh, that's why i watch most movies to be honest like especially like pixar movies which is why again like why pixar movies always blow me out of the water like you know because they're in movies that are obviously made for children like to me like making children's movies is actually like a much more difficult like prospect than just uh making like any kind of old movie because with kids movies you need to like basically walk around eggshells all the time uh it's and while communicating these very complex themes very complex themes to the kids like you know and then leaving little nuggets for the adults that are watching the movie too yeah so yeah it's, just, it's like it's it's like it's it's it, when they and so when they do it right like in the case of star wars like you know where there's no blood at all and every time someone gets shot like and dies like there's a flashy little laser there's like a when little laser thing a jig obi-wan slices off yeah. that guy's arm there is kind of a lot of blood oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah there yeah. is yeah yeah and Bro, his, his more... arm is is a fucking rubber tube it's hollow as fuck yeah yeah right but it's so goopy yeah yeah <laughs> 
it, it, was, it is really goofy, I, and that's the thing. And like, I think again, the blood was like, added actually in the I special think, edition. Yeah, I, oh, I, goofy, goofy. Now here's now here's a real question. Yeah. If you think of uh, New Hope was shot now, based on what we know on lightsabers and how they instantly cauterize wounds, do you think there would have been blood there? No, because that's how they get inconsistency in the story. Is that the idea is that the reason Jedi use lightsabers is because when they cut people, like they instantly cauterize the wound, and like you know, it's like. <laughs> Remind me if I'm or correct me if I'm wrong. But in Attack of the Clones, when Dooku is like fucking with Obi Wan and he like singes him in a couple places, doesn't mm. isn't there blood there as well? No. I can't remember. I can't remember. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe I just I remember, remember seeing like red on his and on his tunic or something. Oh, like on his white? No, just on the sleeve. Like when he got hit on the on his upper arm. <laughs> She's gonna look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, curious. But yeah, I mean, on on that note, like for me, like right, I, I watched all of Star Wars except for the sequels. Like when I was a kid, and so like as I grew up, it was always odd to me to hear people say disparaging things about certain characters. And so like mm. because like I love all the protagonists. Like when when I first started hearing people talk bad about Jar Jar, I was like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with Jar Jar? And then like really, oh. And then um. I remember I watched A New Hope with somebody like this must have been like a decade ago. You know, I'm still like, you know, in my early like late teens, early 20s. And I and and they're like, bro, Han Solo is such a piece of shit. And I was like, what? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, bro, Han Solo is an asshole. And I was like, I was like, bro, Han Solo's not like, you know, he's just like he's, he's his own man or whatever. He's like, he's like, yeah. bro. Like he's like he's like take out the the fact that you know Luke and Leia are brother and sister later. He straight up tries to cock block Luke, <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, because you know, like Han Han is like it doesn't make him a bad guy, right? But like it 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 does to this friend because this is one of those friends who thinks like guy code is the only code and like you should never like try to get in between like another like, dude Han and a girl. Are friends. Right, they're but like friends. it's still like even if you're not friends with someone, it's still like considered guy code to like not try to interfere with that. Like, and the the thing is like, bro, you can. He's like Han can clearly tell Luke likes her, and he's just like, oh, you think a guy like me and a girl like that? He's like, bro, he's such a dick. And I was like, bro, he's it's not like like it made me rethink everything about Han Solo. I'm like, bro, is Han Solo actually like a piece of shit, or is he not? And I uh, I don't think he is. But then like it's the same thing with C three PO. Like as a kid, like. I don't have any problem with C-3PO, but like as an adult, everybody talks about how annoying C-3PO is. Yeah. Well, I think C-3PO is being blood? annoying is, but isn't it supposed to be like There's, part of it's, it's black. It's probably just oh, it's burnt like, from the singe. Like, yeah, singe car. something. Got my first kill. <laughs> Bro, this scene is so um, sick. I fucking love it. This shit. Oh. When they fight. Yeah. Bro. I know you hate Attack of the Clones, but this is that uh, it's a great. There's some cool I parts about it, but I still fucking. I love this movie. Okay. There, there are too many cheesy parts for it for me to ever say like, yeah, this is an amazing movie. Like it's. <sighs> and just seeing Hayden Christensen with a lightsaber. <laughs> Boing, yung, 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 yung. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fucking love that shit. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, um. I don't remember what I was saying. I was talking about, oh, yeah, bro. Like, just hearing people say, like, certain characters are annoying or they hate them. I'm like, because as a kid, like, I loved I loved R2-D2. I love C-3PO. I, I loved all the main characters. I thought they were all great. Like, except for, like, you know, the evil people. We don't like them. We don't like Tarkin, and we don't like Vader. But, like, as an adult, yeah. you, like, you're like, wow, these guys are really well, yeah, great. You know? and, and, too, you think that C-3PO, like, him being annoying is kind of, like, part of his personality. Like, it's his character trait. Like, there's a scene in uh, Attack, like, you know, uh, Revent, The Empire Strikes Back where he freaking they shut him off because of how annoying he's being oh my oh yeah oh my my favorite part is when uh, obi-wan's giving luke all the lore and shit mm. <laughs> and uh <laughs> c-3po says i could shut down if you won't be needing me <laughs> <laughs> he just shuts himself down uh, it's great there is this there is this one part in um the clone wars where they're like taking apart this droid and a c-3po is like Padme, I, or not, you know, Miss Almodala or whatever, like, I would like to, you know, you know, shut down my circuits for a while. You know, can I, may I? And she goes, permission denied. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Just yeah. It's also, um, it's not like an inconsistency, but it's like little things that like you don't remember all the time is like, 
that C-3PO, like, doesn't know Leia at all. Like, he's just on her yeah. ship, and, like, uh... But they I, had their mem... They, no, 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 I remember. They had their memories re... C-3PO had his memory wiped. Yeah. But that was a long time ago. No, that that was established. Like no, it was established at the, at the end of episode three. C three PO would have his memory wiped. Right, and right, right. So but, he would remember. He would remember but, any of those. People. But he goes and lives with Wedge Antilles on Alderaan. How right. does he not know you Leia? Know, I, maybe they reset it oh, again. No, no, I don't no okay. Know. No, uh, I Wedge was on Leia's ship. Yeah, but but he was part of a he was part of a mission. Right with Wedge and Tilly. Also, Tilly's, can we talk about who's this? Who's a member of the Rebel Alliance? Can we talk about this? He was also he was on a Imperial ship, right? Because that was supposed to be like an Alderaan ship that was yeah. part of the yeah. Imperial Senate. It's a council. But then ship. he also knew about. Yeah. But then when Luke asked if he was part of the Rebellion, he's like, "You were part of the Rebellion." It's like, so I don't think C three well, because smart because their master is Wedge and Tilly's, and he's a member of the Rebel Alliance. Why? How did he get in the hands of Wedge Antilles? At the end of uh, a new, at the end of Revenge of the Sith. No. Wedge Antilles wasn't in Revenge of the Sith. Pretty sure he was. No, because Ezra recruited him in Rebels. Okay, but <laughs> Revenge of the Sith came out before Rebels. Ah. Uh, okay. uh, when when I, I'm pretty sure Bale gives the droids to Wedge and says to have their memories wiped. But does it mean that that means it's his droid? Well, it is because in A New Hope, uh, C-3PO says, our master Wedge, or whatever. Our master Captain Antilles. There's no way Antilles. he says that. Yeah, he does. Captain Antilles is not Master Antilles, or he Sir says, he Antilles. Says, he says it was no, their no, master. No, 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 no. There's a diff- the, this, the captain of that ship, specifically, is a, is a different person than the person you're talking about. <clears throat> okay. I, I know this for a fact. Okay, that so guy, it's not Wedge died. Antilles, it's a different Antilles. Yeah, there's a different there's a different guy that owns that ship. It's, and it's Wedge's close to Antilles. Uncle. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying that. But but yeah. Sorry, he, he... sorry if I was yelling. I mean, I'm in the middle of the right combat. Rules, so it could be. No, it's not. And he's not. Yeah. Um... But yeah, no, 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 no. I remember that specifically I'm because getting... I remember playing Star Wars Empire War. You could pay play as that ship, and if, like I remember that guy who was really badass. He was in the first. He was like in the opening sequence of like the yeah. He could use him, and then he get. He, apparently, he gets killed by the emperor or something like that, or someone gets him. Oh, he gets killed on board. That's right. Em- Vader kills him. Vader kills gotcha, him. Gotcha, bitch. Where are you going? You want to wait for me? Oh Jesus fuck! <laughs> um, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna see what exactly C3PO says, bro. Why am I going through the movie? I got the script. Holy shit. I know. I'm not quite sure why you're doing that either. Because I am dumb. Scripty. Scripty. I believe you? in. I believe in you, Cage. Yeah. Um. But C3PO. One of my one of my favorite things that C3PO says in the in A New Hope is that he says uh, that he's not very good at telling stories, which is great because he ends up being like a, a fucking storyteller. So. How? When? Uh. He was talking about like when R two D two ran away or something, and he was like, and he's he's like, I'm not very good at telling stories or something. No, but when does he become a good storyteller? In uh, in Return of the Jedi, when he's telling stories. Oh my about... god, R two T Toa. Yeah. Oh no, not that part. Yeah. When they go, when he's talking to the little people. Yeah, to the Ewoks. But he but he does Ewoks. the same thing um in the extended universe as well, which isn't canon, but uh, he ends up being like a very good storyteller. So. Uh, how so? Like in what? And what? Uh, sense? He like uh, there. I remember like Leia was really impressed with when he was like, he was like tell giving like a brief history of like the Rebel Alliance to the Nogri, who are uh, you remember uh, was this like in a comic or something? No, it's in a book, an extended okay. universe book. But you remember uh, Rook, uh, Thrawn's yeah. little lizard guy. Yeah. Like the yeah. The, 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 um, so they're a big part of the extended universe. Where... I know. Yeah. Oh, so you know all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I remember. I told. Remember, I told you that I spent like yeah, fourteen on hours Wiki- on Wikipedia. Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, Good but, old Wikipedia. But um. Uh, C three PO like uh they so they go to the the planet where all the Nogri live and C three PO is like giving a brief history like to the children on that planet. Yeah, 
Well, the, and she liked his storytelling. Well, it's just like, you know, he he just tells a lot of stories. And, uh, like, he says he's not a good storyteller, but he seems pretty good at it to me. I don't know. <laughs> what? C-3PO is the best storyteller. He convinces the Ewoks not to eat them. He didn't have to convince them at all. Oh, yeah, he did. Sorry. Yeah, he did. Remember, he told them the story. And everyone was listening. No, and they made the walker noises. And it was awesome. Yeah. Okay, here, I'll, I'll just, I'll see if this, uh, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> 3PO says, with all we've been through, sometimes I'm amazed we're in as good a condition as we are. What with the rebellion and all? Luke says, uh, you know of the rebellion against the Empire? That's how we came to be in your service, if you take my meaning. Have you been in many battles? Several, I think. Actually, there's not much to tell. I'm not much of, uh, much more than an interpreter and not very good at telling stories. Well, not at making them interesting, anyway. Uh... Boo, boo, boo. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, yep. Isn't okay. the ship that they're on, like, but isn't the ship that they're on not like a rebellion ship? Uh, okay. So he says, um, he says he's the property of Obi-Wan Kenobi, a resident of these parts, and it's a private message for him. Quite frankly, sir, I don't know what he's talking about. Our last master was Captain Antilles, but with that, uh, with what we've been through, this one, blah, 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 yeah, so. So oh, are you telling me Captain Antilles is not Wedge Antilles? He's not, he's not the same person, no. He's not Wedge Antilles. He gets killed, because remember, he, he gets literally killed. says our last master was Captain Antilles. Yes. Yeah, or Ant I thought it was Antilitis or something Ramus like that. Ramus like Antilles. Yeah. Hmm. The captain and of the Tantan IV. The Tantan IV, yep. That Which was, is the ship, the ship, uh, that yeah, ship. That was my favorite battle, that was my favorite, uh, battleground map in, um. Wedge in, uh, Antilles, who was not related to Ramus, <laughs> <laughs> there you held, go. held the rank of captain in the New Republic Defense Fleet during the last stages of the Galactic Civil War. Ramus Antilles, well, referred to in some sources as Colton Antilles, was the captain of 10 to 4 from the time of the Clone Wars until his death in 0 BBY, meaning he died upon uh, upon the ship. <laughs> upon yeah. the 10 to 4. Remember, remember, remember Vader was choked? Remember Vader choked him out? Remember he was holding Oh, uh, that was the captain? Yeah, that was the captain. Bro, the captain of okay. The ship. Again, I watched this shit as a kid. You know what? My, you know, my little child mind used to think everybody was either the same person or related to, the, to, to people. You remember the rebel, the rebel who you see with like the fucking sideburns with his blaster, and he's like, you know, you remember that guy who looks a lot like Harrison Ford if he was older? I thought that guy was Han Solo for a long time. I was like, bro, when I was like six years old, I was like, I think that's, that's Han Solo. He's like on the rebel ship. That's so funny. And then as I got older, I was like, it's not Han Solo, but maybe he's related to him because he looks like him. He must be. He must be. He must be. Uh, and then I got even older, and I was like, I was a stupid fuck-ass child, man. No, you just had more imagination. Yeah. You know? That's fine. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think, I think um, A New Hope is certainly... A very strong entry into Star Wars, and obviously, it was massively successful as it should be. Yeah, um, it's not. The I mean, best if it wasn't successful, movie. I don't think we would have the universe we had today. So. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, and like Cher said last week, I mean, you didn't have a, you didn't have blockbusters until Star Wars because yeah, uh, you know, and and if you're looking for like, I didn't know this, but based on what Cher said, it sounds like the term literally came from people just like lining Standing up around this. a block. Like they, watch yeah. they, they yeah. busted on like the they're block. Bust, they're, bu they're literally busting the blocks. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, yeah, that's that's why it was, uh, you know, is it was massive. People didn't just see it once. People saw it many times. People brought their whole families to see it. It was huge, right? And without without a new hope, you don't have Star Wars as it is today. Like, it it isn't what it is because you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, and and yeah. obviously Star Wars is a global phenomenon, and it's it's a massive pop cultural influence, and it, it's the you know the biggest IP ever. Yeah, um, I'm literally playing an MMORPG, a dead MMORPG that was only resuscitated. What does IP stand for? Uh, intellectual, uh, intellectual property. property. So like, it? so so it's like uh, so Marvel is an IP, right? Marvel is intellectual property, but essentially. You can use 
you can use other interchangeable words that mean kind of different things, but like it's like a franchise or like a collection yeah. of the same thing. So how come? Oh, that this is a good this is a good little thing. Then how come? Oh, well, I know the answer to that. Fuck. I was gonna no. say. I was going to say, then how come in Marvel they can talk about Star Wars? It's because it's all Disney, right? Yeah, exactly. When, well, because, yeah, because, because like, it's... Marvel characters Star Wars a lot. It's because everyone can talk about Star Wars, you know? Like, if you're referencing something, you can talk about it, but you can't, like, rip it off, you know? Yeah. Oh, it's the, there's a difference? Yeah. It's a, how yeah. would you rip off Star Wars without directly talking about it? Oh, uh, like the robot chicken specials and stuff. Like yeah. they would, they were like, LucasArts was just really chill and they let you do whatever you wanted. Or basically. like Star Wars Theory fan... Uh, fan fiction yeah all so. the fan fiction remember trooper like troopers did anyone else watch troopers no okay. uh troopers in the early 2000s was they were trying to make cops but they did it with like uh stormtroopers instead and they did a uh a, a funny video uh like a, a uh what do they call it? like a proof of concept or whatever real you know and it was like really really good and uh but it fell yeah. apart but well, everybody got, did it, spoofs of star wars though like i mean weird weird al did yeah. a bunch of spoofs of star wars i mean there was like so spoofs are different than than well, yeah because they're fair use thing. they're fair use under copyright law <laughs> yeah yeah um but i remember even like uh it was i think it was g4 they did like a stormtrooper skit where it's like they were talking about like where were you the day the death star blew up and it was like really this weird allegory for like 9 11 but it was about the death star so how come they could do it in SNL with Kylo Ren? Uh, because it's because it's satire, so it's fair use. Like if you if you are that's like in the contract. Like if it's satire, okay. So how can no someone... no it's in the law. But what does something make something definitively satire? Yeah. I think satire is subject to opinion. Yeah, but it's a, but so um, people is intellectual property. So right, that's why we talk about IP. Like it, it's protected under U.S. copyright law. This is a really boring topic and conversation, but essentially, like we couldn't, we couldn't show a scene from Star Wars here without getting copyright claimed because we don't own yeah. that property, but we're using it in our in what our. What about just now? Well, I. It's a little okay. There's no volume, so you know we're, we. But like essentially, like if if I showed a clip from Star Wars like a full like three minute clip from Star Wars in this stream and then posted on YouTube, got 2 billion views and made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Lucasfilm or Disney could claim my video, copyright strike me and take all the all the revenue. But you would have to like make some sort of revenue in order for it to gain any, because I see right. a lot of Instagram reels all the time of a bunch of Star Wars edits and it's like, how do they get that? Uh, it's different because they're actually putting effort into the content. They're, they're, so the, there's something called fair use, where if you transform the content, give it context, don't show it in its full uh, capacity or whatever. Where do they get it? Where do they get it? Because I try to like screen grab stuff and it, my phone is too uh, high tech. It people it. download it off the internet and then they put it into a movie maker and then they clip it up. Yeah. Oh, so they're like technologically smart. Got it. No, they just yeah. or they're or they're. Um, well, no, what... you know, it's not that like you know if you if you have the DVDs, it's not the hardest thing to extract like the raw movie file off that DVD and yeah. start chopping it up. You know. Yeah. I don't know. It sounds like a lot. Uh, I mean, it is a lot of work, but. Yeah, it probably sounded like you know, like today, like uh, I was at the working, I was volunteering at the shelter today, and one of the like the ladies asked me if I got for Christmas, and the I let them know I got a new 850 power supply, so now I can upgrade my 1650 up to a four uh, to a 4070 Ti, and she that's was like, English. "What? That's not, that's not English." <laughs> yeah, it's it's, uh, it's tech speak for he wants his graphics card and his uh, not his graphics card. Uh, I got wait, it is a graphics phone. card. 4070 is no, I, I need I, I yeah 4070 Ti. So what I have right now is I have a 600 gold watt power supply. I have 600. Okay. So I have a 600 so essentially, watt power supply. He wants hey, his, you, he, no matter how many times you explain it, I'm never gonna. Here, fucking I'll, know. I'll simplify power, this. I'll simplify this. Don't power, worry. Make yeah. make computer I'll, I'll, go have I'll bigger simplify things. This. Do bigger more stuff. <laughs> I'll simplify this. Paige he, is trying to simplify it. <laughs> he he got a new power cord so he can plug his pc into the wall and because it has more power on that power cord he can update the processing chip in his computer to make it go faster Ooh, cord make go things fast <laughs> yep yeah no yeah well, basically yeah. misa think you so stupid <laughs> <laughs> misa spec uh yeah well you speak does not make you intelligent 
sometimes sometimes it's hard because it's like as as nerds like i want to i want to be as inviting as possible to like people but like you don't want to just sit there and like mansplain everything to everyone all the time because like that's fucked up too but like well there's there's mansplaining which is like no no but i I mean like would be like okay hold on no 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 no, no, no. listen 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 listen. that's not mansplaining okay mansplaining would be like if she fully explained the thing that i just said and then she's like no you have it wrong and then you explain it back but i'm right because mansplaining is throwing me all the numbers like you did what what Cage did was transform it into some words that I could understand. Mansplain? No, I'm giving you the technical readouts of the things that I got, man. You think I fucking know that? Of course I would, don't. Wouldn't wouldn't mansplaining be like okay. only like? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. As a as a man who uses the internet, anytime I say anything, I'm mansplaining. Okay, that you have to understand that first. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> uh, You're a very respectable human being. Yeah, that's but right. but but it's one. it's tough. It's tough from what Cher is saying, I understand, because for me as a person, like, I I assume people know things that they don't sometimes. So then I, I say it, like, the way I would normally say it, and people think I'm trying to make them feel stupid, which I'm not, but that happens. And then the opposite of that is, okay, I don't want you to not understand, so I'll dumb it down, but then you also think I'm trying to make you feel stupid because I'm talking to you like you're a child. So there's no right way to do this, but it's easy with you because you said, I clearly don't understand what the fuck you're saying, so then I know, okay, I can simplify that. But but most people just kind of ignore it and go, wow, what a piece of shit. (laughs) <laughs> yeah well no it's even that like you know the question is also, like, like what out of context like i know you yeah <laughs> well you know the question is like what did i get for christmas like an 850 watt power supply you know you're like i got some stuff because i'm a i like i'm to a gamer games. yeah well that's what i know that's what i boiled it down to is like oh i can just upgrade my pc now and get like and play like play better games that's essentially yeah, like, what like I bo- if someone asked me like what i got for christmas i'm not gonna be like oh i got the captain rex star wars lego helmet set i'm gonna say i got some star wars stuff yeah yeah um yeah like so uh so so i would tell tell them i got a captain rex star wars phoenix asked me what i got for christmas and i said i got a t-shirt i didn't tell Mm -hmm. her i got a t-shirt with ahsoka on it so no you didn't yeah. Did I not ask? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. You, 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 I think I don't know. I just, the thing is, like, at work or like other places, like I don't really go deep into things because, bro. First of all, nobody really cares. Uh, and second, I do. That's why I asked. Well, I know, I know, but like most of the time, like, bro, like, you know, it's it's hard because like, I could talk about Star Wars for hours, and so I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole, you know. So I just kinda, well, we're like, also like in a very like open environment too, which kind of sucks. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of judgment, you know. <laughs> Lots yeah. of judgment. Yeah. I tried to um I tried to have a uh I think it was like a weekly lunch meeting in one of our conference conference rooms. So like anybody who was fr- a fan about Star Wars, we can come and like chat about it. It didn't actually end up happening, but it yeah, was fun. like a group chat for like a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's, it's it's hard like too i especially feel that like in real estate like you know most of the realtors i know are over 50 and they're just like 100 percent like oh you're the nerd kid like that's basically like how they know me you know it's because i'm like i don't really have any interest i'm not really into sports like you know at least cage like at least you like know soccer and stuff like that and you kind of you really know you really do know baseball you haven't been following me that much lately but when you're at the harbor you're a really big fan of baseball yeah so um yeah you know like i don't have any sports knowledge because i just don't put in the effort to learn about sports <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's yeah. the thing. Is like, that's a great because you have your own interests and you'll find your right. own. Do you people. know how many podcasts there are out there about sports? I mean, that's like the beauty of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I could start a sports podcast. Hey, I'm hello. Uh, I'm here to talk about Manchester United. They are trash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't they just didn't another billionaire just join their team or whatever? <sighs> yes, Sir yeah, Jim they're... Ratcliffe who owns uh, Ineos, which is a, a, a major, major firm. He's he's the richest guy in Great Britain. Um, he, you know, Ineos is like a sailing thing, or they, they sponsor mm-hmm. sail, uh, not sailing, whatever. I don't fucking know. He's rich as fuck, and um, he, he bought 25% of the shares in Manchester United. He'll get sporting control, and essentially... Uh, it's bad 
It's not bad because he's coming in. It's bad because Qatar offered to buy Manchester United for $7 billion. And our owners mm. said, no, the club's worth $2 billion, but in 10 years it could be worth twenty. so we're not See? selling to you. So instead what we'll do is we'll give Sir Jim Ratcliffe 25% so we can stick around, take billions of dollars out of the club with our billion dollars in debt that we bought it on. And then, and then after three years, maybe we'll let him buy it. But if it's worth more, no. So he can buy 25% so we can get uh, 750 million dollars and now so we can cover our asses and continue to extract money out of your club and not put any fucking thing in and let him take all the rap for how shit the fucking team is anyway uh yeah. See, I, the good thing I about this is that you, you could literally really walk up yo yeah i say yeah. you could walk up to anybody in europe and strike up a conversation with them about this and they'd probably know how to like then they probably literally would be willing to sit there and talk with you for at least an hour oh, at least 30 minutes yeah I unless i do my british accent right then they'll just stab yeah. me and run well, no that's only specifically people that's only specifical pe pe people in britain because the other people think it's funny that you're making fun of british people because they hate british people so the fact of the matter is, is i'm not making fun of british people they just all fucking talk like this fucking same in fucking london bruv they fucking they fucking don't do fucking knee fucking shit it's the way you say fucking you know it's got to be like fuck yeah. fuck yeah no see they would think that's really funny that you're making fun of british people and disparaging that their accent like that people in europe would really enjoy that especially people in france it's always gonna be a little cockney you know puppet you know bloody hell <laughs> that, that was the <laughs> most southern <laughs> british accent but to be honest <laughs> the southern is pretty similar to british you know a little yeehaw in my teacup you know yeah Exactly. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Oi, oi, gum. I was just watching Jim Carrey's, um, Jim Carrey's, uh, Christmas Carol. The one where it's, like, really kind of weird. Yeah. And, oh, uh, weird that one is one very, episode. very British. It's British? It's very, very British. Right. Oh, well, yeah, well, yes, I suppose, uh, I suppose that could be true. Yeah. That's my nerd British voice. Well... Speaking of British, if you guys ever want to talk about Harry Potter, I can do that too. Oh, fucking wicked, mate! I don't know if that's nerdy enough, but no, absolutely, it is pretty nerdy. Harry Potter, what you mean the one where the kid who has magic powers goes to the wizard school? That isn't nerdy enough. <laughs> it's mainstream nerdy, you know. But so is Star yeah, Wars. Well, so and so is Marvel. Talk about mainstream. Marvel is the most like mainstream out there, out thing out there right now, pretty much. True, but there are different like levels. Like people can like Star Wars and not be nerdy. I feel like. Uh, I feel like it's kind of the opposite. I feel like you know, if someone's like into Star Wars, like they're a nerd. Like, and I feel like with I, my I reality, feel like ninety percent of the people I know love Star Wars. Well, I'm, I feel like that's what makes it mainstream, though, right? Like, yeah. like that's why I'm saying Star Wars is mainstream. I'm trying to but, say something that oh, Harry yeah, Potter, but so Harry is Harry Potter. Potter. Pretty mainstream. Harry Potter's pretty mainstream too. I was gonna say like, oh, like most. Just, like, my point. Most people yeah, know, kinda. and most people like like. To me, it makes you less nerdy. Like. And that, like you don't have to be a nerd to like Star Wars, which is what you were saying. But you also don't have to be a nerd to love Harry Potter. But like they are still nerdy inherently, right? Like uh, yeah. it's kind of like like yeah. the the difference is like if you're into Warhammer 40k, you're absolutely oh, yeah. a nerd. <laughs> hey man, don't come at me like that. Okay. But 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 you are. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, Whereas, I'm trying like, to buy, like the quit. You know, I'm like trying to be the quintessential nerd too. Like, you know, like you said, like my interests. Like, I play Dungeons and Dragons. Like, I I raid in World of Warcraft, and like I, you know, I paint miniatures for like Warhammer 40k because I just really like this nerdy. I just like this nerd shit. You know, I used to be a dungeon master back in the day for D and D. I don't do that anymore. But it, like you know, that's something I used to do a lot. Yeah. See, all people are hearing is actually um, my <laughs> time, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm, you know what I'm saying? So like, that's what people hear. You know. But like when you talk about Star Wars, people hear like. I am a great, triumphant human being who once uh, slayed a dragon. Like you know, people that think used you're to a not dragon. be true. That used to not be true. Though. Well, yeah, like, but I'm, now I'm but we're in 2023. Yeah, yeah, and and we score extra points because we don't like the sequels, you know. And people are like, "Wow, they must really know Star Wars because they don't like those terrible movies." You think so? People don't think that we're haters because we're hating on Star Wars. Again, I think oh. I think it's one of those thankfully, things where thankfully you look at... Cage and your Cage and I have been here a long time, so there's that. I don't know what you mean by that. Well, I mean like you know on like specifically on this podcast, you know that's what I'm saying. Okay. Like, we've been we've been doing this podcast for like two or three years now, so I think we've pretty much like established so like we really I mean him him and I both really like Star Wars, you know, because like we've spent like thirteen or fourteen yeah. hours but, at but least but a podcast. I'll just say time. you don't need like any any history of anything to like be a fan of something like 
yeah. you can just be a fan of anything. Like, don't let people tell you you're not a fan because uh, you know, I was born in 1924 and I was a fan way before you. So I'm the real fan. Shut the fuck yeah. up, bitch. Or like, you're not a real fan because you don't know all the songs to this certain band. You know, you can right. still like the artist because you've only heard a certain amount of. Say you've only heard two songs from the artist. But you like those two songs. Who's to say it? Why can't you be a fan? Exactly. Yeah. Like and, me, I'm the worst metal fan in the world. Like, um, I barely, I only know songs. I don't know. Yeah, and again, putting but, it putting it into the context of sports, people in England would say I'm not a fan of Manchester United because I've never been to a game. That, yeah. That's what they would say. But bro, that, that can't doesn't be true though. That doesn't There's stop no, me like, from spending over a hundred dollars a month on every fucking channel I have to get to watch every game of that they play. And watch them <laughs> suffer and lose, okay? I'm a fucking yeah. fan, okay? Yeah. Like, you you can't be not a fan purely based on geography. That just doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, but... Uh, That's like saying you can't be a fan of Harry Potter because you don't live in London. I was about... Yeah. It's so funny, because I was actually about to say that. It's like saying you can't like Harry Potter, like, if you're not actually... <laughs> Well, the, the, the actual yeah, argument, the actual argument would be you can't you're not a fan of Harry Potter if you watch the movies and didn't read the book. Sorry, that's what people would say. But mm -hmm. like, it's just um, not true. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. I am going to say that's what that people you will do never, say. will never fully you will never fully understand Harry Potter until you read the books, because you're getting you like if you're you getting like someone Harry else's Potter, interpretation. Yeah. yeah. Like if you get it, if you watch the movies, that's and that's it. That's great. But you're missing like ninety percent of the point of the, you know what I mean, of the point of it. Definitely a lot of story. There's a lot of story. Like this is why, like you know, we've talked about this before. Like Cage and I had a, a podcast. I'm not sure if you were present for this podcast on like whether or not you could reshoot. Um, uh, like could you re, you know, redo Star Wars now, right? Yeah. Like for me, I'm out of the opinion that you could absolutely redo Harry Potter because there's a lot of things in that book that they just straight up didn't like yeah. include as a TV uh, show. Of, because yeah, I, I really feel like there's a lot of things. Oh, do like the, redo the movies, not the books, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, no, re, re, yeah, redo, redo the show, or just redo Harry Potter media, something like you know, a new way of getting the show that isn't like the crimes of Grindelwald. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean the same thing with for Lord <laughs> of the Rings. A lot of hilarious like, about you. Anything with that that book source material, like you can always redo, you know, because you can always but make I it better. That and the only it. the thing is, is like if you really put everything in the books in a movie, it would be way too long. You know, you, that's not a movie; that's a series, well, and, and also, which you yeah. could do. So much like of a Lord book Rings, is describing baby. a scene and a setting and a feeling and like, you know, like. That's... But there's so many actually real scenes that are missing. We never see anything about um, Remus and Tonks. We only get like goosey sentences with them and then you see them die and then you're not even sad about it because you don't understand until you read the books and then you realize how fucking sad it was because they had a kid and they were married fucking and blah, teddy, blah, blah. Teddy. <laughs> yeah exactly so yeah. there's just the, you know to people who are like sad about it i'm like okay but you're not like that sad because you have no idea how deep it goes yeah yeah know. but uh back to the sequel thing um i do wonder like, because because I think most adults genuinely don't like the sequels, but again, if you look at it and say, "Well, were these made for kids?" I think a lot of kids would like them. Because I you... would never let my kids even watch them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, oh, if if my kid misbehaves, I'm making him watch the Last Jedi. Hey, <laughs> you're in for a real <laughs> treat, Busta. That is hella funny. Jesus. Oh, that is kind of funny. But but okay. no, I I think, I mean I don't think Disney made those movies for kids, but uh, no. you know they, it, I think they made it for the people. I think they tried to make it for the people who were fans of New Hope back in the day when they were around to see it out, but it didn't work. Hey, you guys are like talking like there was a plan. I don't think Disney <laughs> no, made it no. for anything or no. anyone. They, they had like, no purpose. Hey guys. Let's you... make Star Wars movie because no, Star exactly. Wars movie the makes money. Was to bring, the only purpose was to bring back, um, for lack of a better term, the old fart actors that were in the originals. No, not even to that. To create fan service for the people who were there and loved the originals. I, no, no. no. I, I feel like loved... you're, you're putting like way too much yeah. thought on Disney's part, dude. Their thought was Star Wars movie make money, so make yeah. Star Wars his, movie. His... Hire big name director, make Star Wars movie. Big name director, make Guess good what? Star they Wars didn't, movie. Hey, but if my thought process wasn't true, then they never would have rehired the original fucking cast. No, no, no. no but, but what, the, happened, the, the, what the, happened was... The director... What happened was they, they had a board meeting 
And in the board meeting, they said, guys, we spent $4 billion on Star Wars. We know we're going to make our money back because we're going to make a bunch of Star Wars movies. And then uh, someone says, well, what should we do? What should the movie? Hey, hey, shut the fuck up, Terry and accounting. Nobody gives a fuck. We're making the movies. We don't care. We'll hire J.J. Abrams because he did Star Trek and people love those movies. Um, but why not? Yep. No, no, no. Tell me how to make money. Don't come to me with problems. And exactly. let's get let's get Mark Hamill back. Hey, thank you, Terry and Accounting. That's a great fucking way to make money. Let's just bring yeah. them all back. Bring back Han, yeah. Leia, Luke. Let's get them all together. Um, uh, when are we gonna do that? Hey, we don't know. We don't know. We'll wait for it. We'll wait for it. Didn't I just explain that? I feel like I feel like I just explained that. They thought, hey, we're gonna make a lot of money, so we're gonna bring back the original characters for the fan service. Did I not say that? Well, yeah, yeah. Just that's now. all. That's all. That's all. How you know? I don't know if that was their original intent, though. Like they just knew we're we're making these money movies. They're gonna make a bunch of money, and then the every simplest dis- way to make money is to make the fans feel nostalgic, so they bring back the original characters. Yeah, it's every every that. decision they made, none of their decisions were story driven. None of them were character driven. Every decision they made was money driven. So that's why we got movies with a very little soul and uh, a lot of uh, a lot of inconsistencies. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, and 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 again, like you can see that with everything because even if you want to buy into this whole, they tried to make Star Wars woke, which I think is stupid. I don't really care. Like it doesn't matter if something's woke as long as it's good, right? Like, I don't yeah. think it was woke, to but, be honest with you. There's but, a lot more woke things out there. Yeah, in Star Wars. yeah, definitely for sure. Like I would say, She Hulk was more like woke. I didn't. And you and I both like She Hulk, and I didn't even think She Hulk was woke. I didn't I even think say, She Hulk. I didn't even think She Hulk was that woke. I didn't. Was, I didn't woke. either. I didn't. We did not. Okay, in my opinion, exactly. we did not need. We did not need Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Like at all. That was probably anno- the most annoying thing, but other than that, I thought it was fine. I don't yeah, know. No, I, I did, I did too, and I really appreciated She Hulk because they made a lot of law jokes that I really liked. Like, so Cage and I were actually like against the grain on She Hulk. We both thought it was pretty good. But that being yeah. said, though, like I would say that, like, even though I don't agree that She Hulk is a woke movie, like woke show, I would say that there is like more woke, quote unquote, Look, stereotypical woke things present in She Hulk than there are in the, in the sequel movies. Yeah, you, ha- you have to understand. Again, like, I, don't... I, I agree with you. It's, yeah. it's more. It's more like blunt like in your face i don't know yeah. like i just can't think of a single scenario in series. yeah huh? it's unapologetic about what it is right like but but at the same time like you have to understand we're on the internet and when you're on the internet if there's a woman in the lead role it's woke if there's a person of color in a lead role it's woke like that's just oh, how the right. internet works so you're talking about like um General, what what was her name? General Hondo or something like that? No, no, I'm talking. I'm talking about Ray and Finn. <laughs> like, yeah. oh. people will yeah. argue that 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 make, making Ray a main character and then making her a Jedi is woke because because no, women. Oh, you're kidding me! Oh my god. That's like so Phoenix, you don't spend enough time on Twitter to get all the nuances the of, of <laughs> brain rot and cancer out there. Um, but it that this is what it is. If if like literally, people will yeah, say. I- People argued that She-Hulk spent all its time with a woman lead character complaining about how hard it is to be a woman in front of a guy who uh, wanted to commit suicide because he was the Hulk. And and she didn't consider his feelings and his thoughts. She just sat there and complained about how hard it is to be a woman. That's what they took away from that. She never complained to Bruce. It was, I don't well, understand. That doesn't make any sense. The, the thing I don't is, remember that part. It was it's in the very first the, the first episode where she got injected the serum and she was all upset and she's like I need my life back and all this stuff and then uh, Br- Bruce was like trying to like teach her to like chill and like whatever and she was yeah. like she kind of went off on him a little bit but like people will just take it out of context and like oh look at the like she's just disregarding how Bruce had to feel. like bro it's not about Bruce in that moment well also they had two completely different experiences she took the radi or the radiation or the injection or whatever completely different than he did he she didn't have to go through the trauma that he did and i guess they're they're mad that she isn't like sympathizing with him (sighs) yeah oh they're also mad that like when they first started fighting like she's more powerful than him and like she defeated him or whatever and it's like bro he wasn't even trying to beat her he was just trying to stop her from fucking leaving yeah (laughs) Oh yeah, people that's say more, that's a different that's a different topic for a different yeah. time now. Anyway, anyway, like, yeah. You know. My point is, the internet is full of brain rot and cancer. Yeah. So uh, yeah, anything that anything yeah. that 
uh, you know, has a woman or a person of color or a strong female character, it's all woke to them. They they made it woke, guys, because because they're just tearing down men and and shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. But that's what I do internet. think. I, I do think in the Last Jedi, that girl with the purple hair was a little woke. The only reason being is I hate when they like try to glorify these really strong characters, but with no background to show that they are strong. If that makes yeah. sense. Like Ray, I'm not mad that she's a a girl at all. I'm mad because she did not like do anything to to put her where she needed to be same with that general girl yeah she sacrificed herself for everybody in the last jedi but it's like who are you everyone thinks she's a hero i, I don't know like i'm like where'd you come from yeah. i don't have any lore man, don't i don't ever have enough lore talk to my you. sister about ray man you, you and her would get into a big fight like ray's her favorite character from the news from like star wars anything now like her it's like it's how you like love ahsoka <laughs> Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> Ahsoka, Ahsoka was literally like not even two years old when she was that strong with the Force and could, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, Ray could never. But she's special. She's a Palpatine and smiley no, face. No, she's not. I didn't even know she was a Palpatine until like the movie came out. Smiley face. She's a Palpatine. <laughs> anyway, no. I'm just saying, no, like, is it? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I see the thing. I wouldn't call those things woke. Like, I would just call them poorly written characters. Like, you know, the general who has the plan that isn't telling anyone, but anyone's, everyone's just following them because they're the general. Like, you know, I'm, even at a baseline, if you say again, yes, it was patient- woke, it that's not what makes it bad. It's bad because it's right, bad. Yeah. Like, if it yeah, was woke exactly. and good, you nobody would care. But people care right. because it was bad. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, anyway, there's no arguments about the wokeness of uh, A New Hope, despite everybody's allegory that the Nazi or the fucking, the stormtroopers were Vietnamese soldiers. No, they were Nazis or the rebels were Vietnamese soldiers or whatever the fucking allegory is. I don't care. That's a topic I've never heard. Uh, that George Lucas said in an interview that he based the rebel the rebellion off of um, the Vietnamese while they were fighting against Americans in the Vietnam War. Um, I feel which, like that's incredibly loose, but okay. Yeah, it's all loose, but people, you know, people, people love allegory. They love empire equals Nazis. That's that's what people say. And I'm like, well, yeah. here's the thing, guys. Yeah. We all have our own brains, and we can all interpret things for ourselves as long as they have validity within the text. But no, 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 no. George Lucas one time alluded to something, so it has to be this. No, like, bro, I don't right. care. He created it, but you're your own person. You can interpret it. Yeah. yeah. Like it's personal to you for a reason. You don't need historical context and whatever to 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 come to a conclusion about something. You can come to your own conclusions. Art is meant to be interpreted, and film is art. You know, you know that's the thing. Like, 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 why I love Tolkien. Why I appreciate the gentleman of Tolkien, Tolkien, so much. You know, because like he realized, like, once he put his book out there, it wasn't really his anymore. You know, and he yeah. and he was okay with other people like modifying it, writing their own little stories, like you know, like and just saying stuff, and you know, it's just yeah. it was fine. Phoenix, how familiar yeah. are you with the Lord of the Rings? On a scale of one to ten? Sure. Zero. Sure. Zero. Sorry. Oh. Okay. So but... there's a lot of there's a lot of people that look at the Lord of the Rings and think like, uh, oh, this this is about World War Two, or this is about this. The, Tolkien in in his book wrote this entire preface to say hey who's Tolkien? is Tolkien the author of lord yeah jr tolkien yeah. wrote lord of the Rings. Tolkien, yeah. so so he Got he it. had this this like 20 page preface pretty much saying nothing i write is an allegory meaning nothing i'm writing is is a stand-in for something in the real world he said he said i hate allegory i prefer applicability you can apply what I, what's in my books to things but you cannot yeah. say that that it's for you, do you know the line the witch in the wardrobe? Yeah. Right. Aslan is Jesus. He just is. He's an allegory for Jesus. Right. What? Head head to toe. So Aslan the lion, right, is literally Jesus and the lion the witch in yeah. the wardrobe. Yeah. Okay. Right. He's a, he's he's a character that's supposed to be an allegory for Jesus, meaning that as a reader you're told Aslan is Jesus. Like there's no there's no ifs ands or buts. This is what the author is telling us, down to his his crucifixion. This is Jesus, right? Whereas Tolkien is saying, I'm not telling you any of that. My characters aren't stand-ins for anything. My story is not a is not a representation of the war. My story is only my story, and you can interpret yeah. it however you want and apply it to the war if you want or apply it to this. But that's based on you, the reader, not me, the author. Yeah. Yeah. 
right? And so, very um, huge integrity. So oh, my, my phone is literally about to die. That's so right. if I cut out yeah. of here, that's why. Yeah, that's we're, we're that's all good. We, we're we're at our natural conclusion anyway. We're not talking about stars anymore. Oh, so. we're a lay over, way a little over our natural conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. thank you everybody who's watched or listened or whatever. You can follow on Twitch on you subscribe on YouTube. You can like, comment, subscribe. You can um, rate, review any podcast on the podcast, whatever podcast platform. The Nerd Ledger. Yeah. Check us out. Uh, do all those things. We love you. Goodbye. Yeah. Donate money.